Hey guys, this is Jared with Lightshine 3D Services. Just want to show you something kind of neat today. Um, this was kind of at a, a request of, of one of the uh, members, I think on the Boss Laser group. Um, I had posted a picture, this part of this right here, um, that showed how I used a, a kind of a dither pattern to create a two-tone effect on, on an engraving. And so a little bit about this. Um, I have an epilogue laser. So what my laser does is take grayscale, any shade of gray, and it uses that to create a pattern to make it appear as if it's kind of a shade of gray. Um, kind of like the old halftone effect um, in printing. Same way that like newspapers and things are printed black and white, but show it, it has the appearance of, of having um, multiple levels of gray. Same, same thing here. Um, you can do that on your laser, even without an epilogue or one of the more expensive brand lasers that doesn't process this automatically. You can do this through Corel Draw, and I'm going to show you um, a way to do that today. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show, share with you that will help you um, just as a matter of get used to this practice um, if you're messing with artwork and you're doing different modifications or, or creating original artwork. There's a little tip that I'll give you. Um, get used to using your nudge distance. Now what the nudge distance does, and you'll see mine is in two places here. What I've done is created a custom toolbar so that I always have my nudge distance showing no matter what's selected. Because um, when you select artwork, the nudge distance disappears as soon as it gets selected. So it's kind of annoying you have to deselect to change this, but with the way I've set mine up, I can have my nudge distance. I can change it at any point on the fly without having to deselect anything. But uh, the reason I want to show you this, what I do is I'll break apart vector art and I'll nudge pieces of it out of the way so that I can very quickly um, select it at, an, at a later time and then nudge it back into its original alignment. And that way I don't have to worry about if everything's centered and all of that. Don't have to use guidelines or whatever other method you might want to use. It's just a super easy way. I just, it's always a, a, a very obvious um, distance so I can tell if it's, if it's uh, in, in the right alignment, um, right position. So anyway, that's just something real quick that I, that I like to do. Um, you'll notice that when I nudge the gray out of the way that this whole thing behind it, what looked like a shadow or an outline, is actually a solid filled object. So what I want to do is copy and paste this word rock, move it, nudge it back to the spot where I, where I took it from originally. Then I'm going to select the entire thing, the outline with the gray, and I'm going to use my back minus front. Now the reason I did that is in a minute when I put this back over the top, I want to be able to see the dot pattern that I'm creating that gives me this effect. So again, I'm gonna get rid of the exact location where these letters are going to be so that they'll actually show up, okay? So the next step, this is the part where you're actually creating the shade of gray or the dither pattern that's going to appear on the engraved object like it's a shade of gray. Or, or some other shade of, of uh, level of color. What you're going to do is select the artwork that you want to turn gray. Um, if you use one of these grays here, this is where you get the different percentages of black. Um, I like to use somewhere around 30 or even 20%. On this one, I'm going to try 30 and see what it looks like, 30% black. And you'll see if you hover over those little swatches, you'll see it tells you the percentage of black. Um, it bases this pattern on that color. That color is how you determine what this pattern is going to look like or the density of it. So I'm going to select the gray. I'm going to come up here to bitmaps and I'm first going to convert it to a bitmap. Now this number is important here. Um, your resolution that you're engraving at, it needs to stay somewhere close to that. Um, the resolution will actually make the dots either larger or smaller. So 400 is okay, 300 might be a little bit better in this case, so I'm gonna do that. I'm just not gonna worry about anything in here except for maybe transparent background. I think I need to check that. And when I click okay, it doesn't appear that anything happened, but if I zoom in, I can tell that it turned this into a bitmap image. Now your next step 
it's going to be to go to bitmap and then we're going to change the mode to black and white pure black and white now when we do this it's kind of ugly looking when it's zoomed out but when you zoom in you can see that it's got a very consistent dot pattern this is the dither and what we want to do is this conversion method there's different ones of these and a lot of these are choices that you can use from an epilogue laser um, with a boss laser you don't really get those choices unless you're using Corel Draw and do it this way manually so I particularly like the Floyd Steinberg on this I typically use Jarvis if I'm if I'm engraving something on my laser but for this particular effect Floyd Steinberg looks really good it's a very consistent pattern now you can you can change the in intensity here and that will it will kind of uh, make your dots a little bit more dense or less dense. Um, somewhere close to the middle here seems to be a pretty good fit. Then I'm going to click OK. And when I nudge this back up to the top, you're going to see a little problem. We still have our white background there. Well, all you have to do is come down here toward the bottom left corner and choose to have no, um, no background. Just like that. And now if I zoom in, you can see that I've got a series of dots that are going to be inside of my text or this outline of text instead of solid feel or gray. And it will give the appearance of having that grayscale. Now again, I'm just going to quickly do this with the, with the hand. I'm going to nudge this. Well, actually, I haven't ungrouped it yet. Probably have to ungroup it a couple of times. There we go. So once again, I'm going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. Um, this, yeah, I'm going to leave it at 300. It seemed to be okay the last time. I'm going to click OK there. And I'm going to go to bitmaps. Uh, let's see, mode, black and white. In this case, it's not seeing anything. This is a different shade of gray that I was using on this one. So I can zoom in on this side and it will show me what those dots are going to look like. You can see they're getting a little more dense. I'm going to just do this one at 100 and see what happens. Zoom in on it. Dots look a little weird on the screen, but it should look really good when you actually do your engraving. And then that one didn't have, actually, it might have had white on it. Let's see. I want to make it gray for a second. Yep, it was, it was transparent. So we are good. There you have it. And if you mess with the different settings of the patterns, um, the Jarvis or Floyd Steinberg or Stucky or whatever, whatever you have the options to do, um, it'll it'll differ these just enough to where it appears uh, to to give you a different effect. Um, and you can do this with different colors. Just select what you want, make it a different shade of gray, and then use that to convert it to a bitmap and and just see how it. See how it works. Start playing around with some old junk cups and and uh, see see what kind of cool effects you get. Uh, take lots of notes. Write down settings because um, you're going to want to be able to refer to those in the future um, when you want an exact look. So hope this helps. Give me some comments. Give me some feedback on on how this does, and and most importantly, post some pictures for others to see um, the effect that you get with this. We'll catch you later.